Hello, class eight students. How are you all? I hope all of you are absolutely fine. So, in today's class, we are going to be studying chapter number thirty from your textbooks, which is on page number one twenty two. So, let us open our textbooks to chapter number thirty. So, as all of you can see, the name of the chapter is the American Civil War. And what are the key points that we are going to learn, or the topics that we are going to learn or study in this topic? So we're going to talk about background. We're going to talk about causes, the beginning of the Civil War, and role of Abraham Abraham Lincoln and Gettysburg Address. All right. So let's just understand a brief introduction about this story of the American Civil War. The 19th century was a period of growth and expansion for the United States of America. At the same time, for America, it was a period of tackling some grave challenges, that is, some very serious challenges pertaining to humanity. The major challenge was that of slavery and the deprivation of freedom and human rights of the slaves. But how did uh, you know certain set of people become as Slaves. All right. Okay. So it says that the slave trade started in America on a large scale after AD 1650. Thousands of Africans were sold as slaves in the British colonies of America. So basically, what had happened that a lot of Africans they were uh, they were actually sold. As slaves, and where were they brought in the British colonies that were in America? So, in uh, if you remember the chapter that we have read about the American War of Independence, we read that how uh, British had converted parts of America into colonies. So, these people who were from Africa, they were actually packed and they were labeled. You know, a label was put on their uh, hands generally that they were labeled as uh, slaves, and they were packed in ships and they were sent to. Different countries, particularly in the British colonies that were in America. So this inhuman practice, and these slaves, of course, were treated in the most inhuman manner. But when America uh, got its freedom, so it was divided into two regions: the North America and the South America. And most of the slaves they were brought in the Southern region. All right. So basically, then what ha started happening? Then within the country, within North America and South America. There arose some set of differences, all right. So, what were these set of differences? So, during the period of American Revolution, the states of America were divided into two distinct regions: the North, which consisted of Northern states, and South, which consisted of Southern states. Then, sorry, from AD eighteen hundred to eighteen sixty, both these regions grew in very different ways. Which caused social, political, and economic changes, differences in the social, political, and economic structure of the two regions. So, in North America, the political structure, economic structure, the social structure was very different from that of South America. Now, because the uh, differences were extreme, there were, of course, clashes between the two regions, which led to a civil war. So, what exactly is a civil war? So, civil war is a situation when there is a war-like situation within the country between two regions, between two communities, between two different sets. All right, that is called as a civil war. A war which happens within the same country because of differences between two communities. So, in the case of America, what had happened? There were a lot of clashes, a lot of difference of opinion between those residing in the northern part of America and those residing in the southern part of America. By and large, the major reason was that the southern region consisted most of the people who were brought in as slaves. But of course, when the uh, slavery was abolished, and uh, you know, the uh, America had uh, you know also. Uh, attained its freedom. Some of them, like this, uh, despite uh, you know being a free country, people in the southern region were not treated in the right manner, and that is where people started resenting the manner in which they were 
triggered leading to a civil war so now we are going to discuss in detail the causes of the civil war but let's continue the introduction that we were uh, just reading so we have read till now that it was divided into north and south now what were the differences so north became the center of manufacturing commerce and mining that is it became economically very strong but on the other hand the south featured an economy centered on agriculture and plantation that needed labor at cheap rate so basically the north northern part of the country was uh, very much strong in terms of industries the southern part was strong in terms of agriculture and of course agriculture required a lot of labor at cheap rates so slaves were the best option for them as it was a one time buying thereafter these slaves worked whole life without wages so these slaves were sent that you know you are give, given an accommodation you are given food to uh, eat you don't need any money this is the manner in which they were treated so what about the causes of the war so after the war of american independence in 1776 the northern and the southern states developed differently north there was trade and industry which had no need for slaves southern state we just studied that there was tobacco plantation which required a uh, labor on a large scale but labor which should be available uh, in very economical rates then the ill treatment of the slaves like we just studied that they were not given any wages and they were only at the mercy of their master so in whatever way the master treated them they were they had to accept it and they were subjected to misery and they suffered social as well as economic injustice economic injustice i've already explained you what about social justice that they were looked down upon so like in the case of india when we started that how india was divided into uh, four classes so the backward or the shudras they were uh, you know really looked down upon and the people did not uh, mingle with them saying that these are the uh, people of the lower classes the uh, slaves or the people most of the slaves who were resided in the south american region they suffered the same kind of fate then taxes so the increase in taxes helped in industrial north while the southern states protested so the northern region supported this increase in taxes because they were getting revenue out of it but the uh, people residing in the southern region protested they were prevented from importing goods from countries with which they trade separate demands the industrial north wanted better transportation system but the southern system wanted better facilities for agriculture so it's the same country we are talking about now the north region says i want better system of transport and communication because it is more industrial oriented but the southern region which was uh, more uh, agriculture uh, dominated it said that we want better irrigation facilities so how should the revenue be allocated that was a concern so there were continuous clash between the two regions then doctrine of nullification so the doctrine of nullification suggested that states residing within the union have a unilateral inherent that is natural and undocumented right to void any law created by the federal government that could be deemed unconstitutional so again there was a clash then abolition of slavery in 1831 the abolition the abolition sorry abolition abolitionist movement was started by w l garrison all right in 1846 the congress introduced a law to limit slavery the southern state objected to the law limiting slavery all right so why did the southern states have a problem with that because in southern states it just did not consist of slaves it consisted of people who were masters to these slaves so they were getting labor at cheap rate they were getting a full time uh, you know servants basically whom they treated in the most inhuman manner so the southern states said that we do not want abolition of slavery it should continue okay then what happened new states so with the westward expansion the uh, two new states of new mexico and california were added the north wanted them to be free from slavery while the south wanted them as slave states so again there is a difference between the north and the south region then a compromise was worked out when california applied to be a free state and congress passed the fugitive slave act by which southern states could recover runaway slaves and punish them so basically they did work on a midway but then at the end of the day who was still suffering 
those who were slaves then dred scott came he was a slave of an army doctor and when his master died scott applied for freedom the supreme court decided that he was still a slave then personal liberty laws so the abolition abolitionists had been fighting for freedom of the slaves several northern states passed personal liberty laws which encouraged people to disobey the fugitive slave act the abolitionists became more active when harriet fisher stowe published uncle tom's cabin it gave a clear picture of the cruel and inhuman treatment of the slaves by their owners so now there was continuous clashes between the north and the southern region pertaining to the fact or law whether slavery should be completely abolished or not then came the election of abraham abraham lincoln so in the presidential election of 1816 the republican candidate abraham lincoln of illinois was elected now he was opposed to slavery this was regarded as a great victory for the northern states the northern states were happy that the one who has been elected is against slavery breaking away of the union so after lincoln became the president in 1861 Eleven southern states of South Carolina, Mississippi, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana, Texas, Virginia, Arkansas, Tennessee, and North Carolina broke away from the Confederate States of America. Jefferson David became the president, and this was the immediate cause of the Civil War. That some states decided to separate themselves. Now we talk. So we've spoken about the causes of the war. Now we talk about. Abraham Lincoln. So we know that he was elected as the sixteenth president of the United States. Lincoln could not get formal schooling, but poverty could not stop him being self-educated and an avid reader. In eighteen eighty eighteen sixteen, the Republican Party nominated Lincoln for the presidency, and he promised that he was going to end slavery and den uh, denounce the disunion. That is the states who were which were separated. and lincoln he won the elections by popular vote so this is abraham lincoln president lincoln delivered a speech on november 19 1863 at the soldiers national cemetery he proclaimed that civil war was a struggle for the preservation of the union broke down by the session crisis with a new birth of freedom that would bring true equality of all the citizens he paid respect to those soldiers who died at gettysburg to ensure the survival of america's democracy that is government of the people by the people for the people it shall not perish on earth so basically abraham lincoln also spoke against slavery and he mainly showed a lot of respect for all the citizens and particularly the soldiers and he was a kind of leader that he said that we are here to establish equality if we are a democratic nation equality has to be established and that is why slavery cannot exist now what was the impact of it yeah let's see so first we're going to talk about certain main events related to the american civil war what were these main events So the Civil War pitted the citizens of the United States against one another. It started on April twelfth, eighteen sixty-one. It lasted for four years, from eighty eighteen sixty-one to eighteen sixty-five. Eventually, the South surrendered to the North. The major events of the four-year Civil War include the following. Here, by this given, so eighteen sixty-one, the attack on Fort Sumter by the Army of Confederacy on April twelfth, eighteen sixty-one, initiated the American Civil War. the southern state had declared themselves independent by session ordered the northern states to vacate the union forts built on their land so when the union soldiers they refused to vacate the fort in charleston south carolina the confederates fired cannons at them till they surrendered and the newly elected president abraham lincoln ordered the union army to enforce the law of the land the southerners took this opportunity and declared a war The battle at Bull Run in Virginia is considered the first major battle of the Civil War. A Union army led by General Irwin McDowell fought Confederate troops under General Thomas J. Jackson. The battle ended in an overwhelming victory of the South. Then what happened in AD 1862? The Battle of Sharpsburg, also known as the Battle of Antietam, was fought on September 17, 1862. It was the first major battle and the bloodiest of all that took place on the northern soil. The Confederate army moved back. 
1863, the issue of Emancipation Proclamation by Lincoln on January 1st, 1863 was the hallmark of the American Civil War. This proclamation declared that all slaves held in the territory controlled by Confederates were henceforth free. It did not actually free the slaves instantly, but made the abolition of slavery the issue of the war, of the Civil War. This had an important effect on swaying world opinion. France and Great Britain refused to support the Confederacy thereafter. General Robert E. Lee led a 78,000 strong Confederate army northward into Pennsylvania in 1863. Their hopes were, however, dashed to the ground at the Battle of Gettysburg. And then 1864, President Lincoln appointed General Ulysses Grant to command all the armies of the United States in March 1864. General Grant and General Sherman fought many wars with the Confederates led by General Robert Lee. And in 1865, General Lee concluded that the war was not going to end so easily, rather it would cost more lives. So the Southerners had already lost many of their territories to the Union. And on 9th April 1865, he surrendered the Confederate Army to General S. Grant in Virginia. And on May 26, 1865, the last Southern General, Kirby Smith, he also surrendered. Thus, the American Civil War came to an end and leaving the Northerners and the Southerners as part of the United States of America. So all were brought under, brought under as the United States of America. What were the results of the war? Of course, there was loss of men and money because a lot for four years, the war is going on. So obviously, a lot of men died in this war. And of course, a lot of money was also spent. So about a billion people were wounded or killed. Northern states had spent more billions of dollars than the South. It reflected in the lowering of national income, more debts and debts. Preservation of the Union, of course, Abraham Lincoln was able to keep the United States of America intact. So it's not like that it broke into two different parts. Rather, North and South were restored and they all became as the part of the United States of America. Abolition of slavery, of course, the Civil War completely ended slavery. The United States became the guarantor of full and equal political rights to all the citizens. And transport and trade developed. The Great Continental Railway became operative from 1869. Roads and waterways were also constructed. The Congress set up a common banking system in 1863 for better finan financial dealings. A new tariff policy helped industries to progress. And then in November 1863, President Lincoln gave a speech at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, the same place where the Battle of Gettysburg had taken place. So we've just read that he paid respect to the soldiers. Today, the American Civil War is an important part of history. This is because it paved the way for eradication of slavery and established Abraham Lincoln as an important figure in the United States and the world. Right? So basically, Abraham Lincoln was, it was under the leadership of uh, Abraham Lincoln that slavery finally came to an end. And of course, even the Civil War came to an end because he was truly a visionary and a peace-loving Okay, so I hope all of you enjoyed the story of American Civil War. And there is something that we learn from this story of the American Civil War that if there is disharmony between the two communities, ultimately it is going to have a negative impact on all the citizens. It doesn't matter who wins or who loses, but all people suffer when there is disharmony in the society. So we as individuals should try our level best to ensure that there is harmony in the society. How can you bring harmony in the society? So in your classroom, please make sure that students do not fight among themselves. All right, I'll see you all in the next class. Till then, bye-bye, my dear students.